Chancellor, His Excellency, Wom Taylor, Reverend Baldwin Lonsdale, President of the Republic of Vanuatu, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Acting Pro-Chancellor and Acting Chair of the USP Council, Ms. Fekita Mo Eloa Uotoy Kamanu, Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Rajesh Chandra, Chair of the Finance and Investments Committee, Ms. Fei, Council, Senate, and FIC members, senior management and staff, our dedicated sponsors, fellow graduates, families and friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Now, before I begin, I want to share with the graduates something I learned online a few years ago, and I'm going to ask for your participation. And this is something that I do on days when I feel a bit overwhelmed by challenges or I'm filled with self-doubt. So don't be shy. I'm going to ask you to take your right hand and put it on the left side of your chest. Now, you may not be able to feel it now because you're dressed in your gowns and your dresses and your suits. But if you feel closely, you will feel that that's your heart beating. And as long as your heart is beating, that means that you're alive. And as long as you are alive, that means that you are filled with purpose. So all the challenges you happen to face happen for a reason. And the fact that you are here means that you became victors in the midst of those challenges. So you were not just placed on this earth to survive, but to live and walk with purpose. So never allow anyone to tell you otherwise. It is indeed an honor and privilege to be given the opportunity to speak on behalf of the graduating class of 2015. Whenever I get the opportunity to interact with people, they always ask me, why Fiji? And I always respond that Fiji chose me. Because out of the myriad of scholarships I applied to over the course of three years, I was awarded one to attend the University of the South Pacific. Therefore, the fact that I'm standing here proudly on this platform as a testament to the notion that regardless of your socioeconomic background, nationality, race, gender, or creed, your dreams are very valid. Be bold in your hopes and dare to follow your dreams and not your present circumstances. Because if your dreams are not scaring you, you are not dreaming big enough. My name, <laughs> thank you. My name is Daniel Indiana Demetrius Edwards, and I'm a daughter of the beautiful region of the Caribbean and a native of the stalwart country of Jamaica. <laughs> thank you. And I would just like to use this, use this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of all Caribbean students and the wider international student body to the University of the South Pacific for wholeheartedly accepting us as equal members of your community. The depth of our gratitude will forever remain infinite. Now, let's talk about the first day of school graduates. I am sure you vividly remember that first day. Excitement muddied with a bit of trepidation and fear. Butterflies, which became full-grown birds, rummaged through our stomachs, attempting to gnaw the rope of sanity that held our hearts and our minds in place as we entered into the unknown. A million questions like miniature dark ballerinas danced through our minds. What would the workload be like? What would they expect of me? Would I even be good enough? And as weeks went by, our uncertainty was chipped away and our fears allayed as we integrated into this melting pot of culture and diversity on one of the most beautiful campuses boasting world-class facilities, like the amazing library drenching with all the literature we could ever need to complete our assignments. As students of this noble institution, I'm sure we've accumulated memories that will be etched in the DNA of our minds until breath leaves our bodies. If there is anything that I have learned throughout my journey here at USP, it is this. Academia is a very, very, very jealous mistress. <laughs> we shall never forget those traumatic periods where our beds were angry with us because of our lack of nightly commitment. And sleep became nothing but an illusion, a mere concept. And Nescafe coffee became our best friend in an effort to complete that assignment. Although many of us were informed of the due date way beforehand, we naively thought, how hard can 4,000 words be? That's what, six pages, right? In two days and I'll be done. <laughs> so many of us spent our nights idle with friends at Southern Cross 
or other spots on campus, Demoda City, Traps, or even O'Reilly's. <laughs> and utilize our generous internet data to catch up on some well-needed SMT, social media time, Facebook, <laughs> YouTube, until Moodle frighteningly reminded us that the assignment was due in less than a week, and we suddenly realized that writing 4,000 words was not as easy as we thought. <laughs> not to mention those sleepless nights before examinations, after attending weeks of classes, the exam period for many of us became the first time we really, we really looked at our reading material and were often shocked by the sheer volume of information covered throughout the semester that we were somehow previously not privy to. So we exhausted ourselves the night before leading up to exams trying to play catch up. And who can forget those days of disappointment and frustration where we literally sweat blood and tears to complete an assignment, one that we were absolutely sure was the best thing to ever been written. Forget the great authors of Centuries Gone, William Shakespeare who? Because this piece right here was a work of art, the Mona Lisa of academic writing. <laughs> only to have our arrogant hopes crash and burn a week later upon receiving our less than satisfactory grade for a paper we were sure they were going to have to invent a new grade for because an A just would not do it any justice. <laughs> and listen, do not get me started on turn it in. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you that nothing will humble you like it can. You all know what I'm talking about, graduates. Even though in the back of your mind you're sure you didn't plagiarize, well, I hope you didn't, every time you had to submit an assignment, you heard that theme song from Jaws, you know, dur, 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 and you had to endure that suspense, heart pounding, palm sweating, whispering prayers, while Turnitin took its own precious time to generate the report. I'm sure it is the only time during your academic career that you literally prayed for less than 18%. <laughs> Trust me, nothing will make you angrier or more panicked than when handing in an assignment five minutes before it is due, Turnitin politely informs you that your assignment exceeded 25% after you stayed up the night before trying to painstakingly complete it. And for those of us who lived on halls of residence or chose to leave the comfort of our families and rented by ourselves or with friends, our experience has been punctuated by memories of days where hunger made a mockery of us and gnawed at our stomachs. We slowly but surely discovered that cost you less was really cost you more. <laughs> And instead of McDonald's and nights at Bad Dog's Cafe, chow became our food of choice. We transformed into innovative chefs making one-pot dishes with the last of random ingredients stored in our refrigerators and cupboards. And to this day, we haven't been able to formulate names for such culinary concoctions. <laughs> now here is to friendships that we have been blessed to form while studying here. Friends are the family who we get to choose and these bonds are more important than you may know. They will help you to navigate some of life's most unimaginable and daunting situations because friends are often those people who know the song in your heart and sing it back to you when you've forgotten the words. So keep them close. As one of two regional universities throughout the world, USP stands as a resolute example of what a great recipe of working together and integration can produce. Graduates, do you remember your first open day? I remember mine so perfectly. I was absolutely blown away by the presence of such a wealth of culture that existed on this campus. I became mesmerized by the pride each group exuded as they put on their individual showcase. When the performance garment was stripped away, I was reverenced by the fact that everyone went back to being one student body, not divided by culture. And this is one of the things that I absolutely love about USP. It doesn't use culture as a divisive tool, but instead to educate and unify, because here, there's always a space for you at the cultural table. I like to think of this tertiary journey like a tree, all facets interconnected, none being able to function without the other. 
So today, I say thank you to The Roots, our families and friends who believed in our dreams and answered phone calls at unspeakable hours requesting that our bank accounts be furnished. <laughs> if it were not for your support, it is highly unlikely that we would be standing here today. To the branches, our lecturers and tutors, who not only educated and fostered our intellectual growth and desire to learn, but allowed us to badger them with questions and comments and endured being fed ad nauseum with story after story of why it would be impossible to hand in the assignment on the due date, presenting our cases for an extension as if our very lives depended on it. Your constructive criticism and guidance has invaluably contributed to our development. And the last thank you is reserved for us, the graduates. We are the leaves of this tree. Tell yourselves thank you for believing in the validity of your dreams, even when you did not feel worthy enough to have such dreams. Say thank you to yourselves for enduring various challenges because it is your determination and hard work that anchored you when self-doubt wanted you to sail and dock on the shores of hopelessness and complacence. Your presence here today is a testament to your fighting spirit. You came, you saw, and you conquered. And as maturity unhinges you from this tree, that is your academic journey, and as we gently fall and are carried by the autumn winds of life to our next destination, never forget the tree from which you sprung. Because regardless of how many other leaves you will settle among, let the essence of USP that runs through your veins, the essence of courage, excellence, and acceptance dictate how you treat those that you will meet. I implore you today as you sit in your seats, contemplating what the future may unravel, to never give up on your dreams, your passion, and to always follow your bliss. Bliss is defined as happiness or great joy. So let me ask you, what is the one thing in this world that makes you happy? Too many times we allow fear to imprison our dreams. I remember hearing the actor Jim Carrey once say, and I quote, the decisions we make in this moment are either based in love or fear. So many of us choose a path of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous, so we never ask the universe for it, end quote. Do not let fear convince you to remain in the boxes of your comfort zone because the world is waiting for us to change it. Today, I challenge you to demand from the universe what it is you want, and I encourage you to follow your bliss. I can't promise you that it will be easy, but I can promise you that it will be so worth it. So if you can follow your bliss, do not, if you can see your bliss, follow it. Do not be intimidated by its size or its carnivorous nature, pursue it. Chase it with your bold goals and the arrow of hope. Go find it in the crevice of mountains and die for it in the deepest oceans. If you can't see it, start looking. Regardless of how long it takes or how many opportunities you may have considered dead, always keep searching. For new opportunities resembling the ones you may have just lost may simply appear, ripe and pungent with promise. Though the tides of the ocean of life may be rough and knock you down, never stop. Though you may feel you are doing it all wrong, never stop, because the world is waiting. Congratulations, class of 2015. Your achievement today is well-deserved.